Have you ever tried doing a screen replacement or pasting an image onto the wall but your image doesn't seem to stick? Well, today we will fix that by manually keyframing the corner pins so that it will definitely stick onto the wall and it won't look very distorted. And if you want to skip to the part where I do the keyframe, you can go to around 5 minutes 40 seconds. However, I hope that you guys can stick around for the entire video as I'll be sharing some useful tips and tricks for pasting image onto the wall or doing a screen replacement. Let's go! Alright, so let's get started. Today we will be tracking this screen on the right, the one with the sunflower on it. So with the playhead over the clip, head over to the fusion tab. With media in one selected, hold down control, spacebar, and search for planar tracker. Then change the tracker from point to hybrid point area. Since there's a lot of movements and there's a change in camera perspective, we will set the motion type as perspective so we don't have to change it. Then we'll go to a frame where we can see the entire sunflower screen and select a, a tracking area around it. So make sure that the entire screen is selected and that you have not accidentally selected this purple. Yes, it's a tulip. So this purple tulips on the left. So click set on reference time and track to end. Then go to the start of the keyframes here and track to start. To paste your image over the screen, head over to the media pool and drag your image from the media pool down here. Connect the output of the media pool, sorry, of your image to the green input of the planar tracker. Then go to the frame where you can see the screen, select planar tracker and change the operation mode to corner pin and align the four corners of the corner pin to the corners of the screen. So I am zooming in by holding down control and mouse scroll wheel and dragging like this by holding down my mouse scroll wheel and dragging. There's something I want to fix about my image. If you notice in our original logo, the YouTube is longer horizontally, but it got stretched out vertically. So the aspect ratio is screwed up. So to fix this, we will use a crop node. So with media in two selected, hold down control, space, search for crop. Now it's pretty small. So with crop selected under inspector, Change the X and Y signs. So something like this looks good. To reposition it, change the X and Y offset. So I will just centralize it like this. And if this works for your scenario in your case, for where you are pasting the image, then your job here is done. But I want to cover up the entire screen. so. I don't want to see the sunflower at all. In this case, I will add in my own background node. So I will delete crop with media into selected control space and background. Now the background is connected to the merge via the green arrow. So the green arrow signifies that it is at the foreground. To switch that, I will select merge control T. So this will switch the inputs of the merge. Now the background is at the background with this yellow arrow. So we want the background to be the same color as this YouTube logo background. We will select background and drag this eyedropper tool and select the background here. Now the background is white and click on image, change, sorry, uncheck the auto resolution checkbox and change the width and height to adjust the aspect ratio and the size. So I'm doing this completely by eye and it's not any form of accurate measurement but it should be good enough. So I think I'm pretty satisfied with this. Right now we shall look at our actual tracking. So I'll select media out one 
and we shall play it back. So notice that there are two points where the image got distorted. The first point is over here. The image got distorted and this is because of this black tape here in front blocking the tracking data of our planar tracker. And the second point is somewhere here where the image got squashed. And this is because part of the screen is out of the camera. So the tracking data got squashed. And let's fix the first one first which is this black tape here. And we'll do so by keyframing the corner pins. So how I would like to do this is to go to the point right before the image got distorted. So I'll use my directional keys on my keyboard to move frame by frame. So all right, I'll move frame by frame. So at this particular frame, the image is distorted and if I move one frame forward, the image is perfect. So I will select planar tracker one and under beside corner pin, there's the arrow, click on it. And under reference time positions, set the four keyframes. So they should turn red. So by setting keyframes, I'm ensuring that at this point in time, the image will remain as it is right now like this. Now, I will click on media out again and find a point right after the image is back to normal. So now it's distorted, it's distorted. And somewhere here, the image is back to normal. I will click on planar tracker one and set another keyframe. So I will set all four keyframes. Now, I will find the point where the image is the most distorted. So I'll click on media out one and can move frame by frame. I would say it is most distorted here. So I'll click on planar tracker one and I will manually adjust the corner pins to match the corners of the screen. And notice that when I manually adjust it, the keyframes will automatically be added. So when I look at the top left and the top right corner pins, I notice that they are already perfectly aligned. However, I will still add the keyframes myself, even though I haven't adjusted it. And this is to ensure that no matter what happens at this point in time, at this current frame, the image will remain like this. So let me play it back again. Well, we can see that it has improved a lot but there's still a bit of distortion. And what I'm going to do from now onwards is to keyframe, is to set more, set more keyframes. So I'll probably fast forward this part and not bore you guys. Alright, so I'm back from my keyframing journey. So, while you guys were listening to the jazz music, and hopefully I added the jazz music, I was setting keyframes at the most distorted points. So, I just basically played back the clip and find the most distorted points and manually added keyframes to the corner pins. And let me play back the result. So, I added about three more keyframes and honestly, I could have added more if I had, if I have more patience, but I think this looks good enough. It's passable, I guess. So let's flatten out the keyframes. Let's smoothen out the keyframes. To do so, select planar tracker and go to spline and select this checkbox beside planar tracker. Double click the tick beside track to deselect it. Click zoom to fit here. Click anywhere here, Control A to select everything and press F. 
So this will smoothen out the keyframes and hopefully make it smoother. So there's a bit of an improvement. So that is keyframing. And there are personally two small issues with keyframing. I mean, keyframing is awesome. It gives you results and you can do it manually. But number one, the first issue is that you have to do it multiple times and Ain't nobody got time for that. And number two, the second issue is that if you were to set too many keyframes, especially when they are very close to each other, the final result might be very jumpy. So the image might look like it's having a spasm. So let me introduce you to another method, which is cutting the clip into smaller clips before tracking. So let's rectify the second issue over here where the YouTube logo got squashed. So we shall go back to the edit tab. So right at this point, the image would still be considered perfect, not distorted. So I will select the clip and break it by holding down Ctrl and B. Now I've broken the clip into two. And let's find a point right after the image goes back to normal. I would consider this back to normal. So I will select the clip, Ctrl B to break it. Now the image on the left and on the right, they are both perfect. But the middle clip has a distorted image. It got squashed. So with the playhead over the middle clip, head over to the Fusion tab. And we will delete this old planar tracker by selecting it and press backspace. And with media in selected, we will add in a new planar tracker. Now change the tracker from point to hybrid point area and connect the output of this merge to the green input of the planar tracker. Now we shall go to the frame where we can see majority of the screen. So I guess that will be the first frame. And we will draw a selection area for tracking. Okay, this looks good and hopefully it works. So set on reference time and track to end. Okay. Make sure your merge is connected to the planar tracker via the green arrow. And we shall change the operation mode to corner pin. Then you know the drill, we will just connect the corner pins to the screen. Now we shall go back to our edit tab to see the full result. Okay, obviously that there's a jump from this previous clip, the end of this previous clip to the start of this middle clip. And there's also a jump of the image from the end of this clip to the start of this clip. And we will rectify that by adjusting the corner pins and setting keyframes. So from, let me zoom in. From this clip to this clip, the YouTube logo shifted down a bit. So we'll just have to manually shift it up. Yep, so make sure that the playhead is in the middle clip and we will manually adjust the corner pins so that it's higher. Okay, now it looks a bit better. So I will set keyframes at this point by clicking on planar tracker and corner pin and setting the four keyframes here. Now we will rectify the other side. Honestly, it already looks good. So let me play it back. Well, I say that is good enough. Let me play back the final result in full screen.
Thanks for watching this video. I hope you all learned something today. And gosh, I realized that I said the word so, so many times. So if someone counts the number of times I said so, just comment down below and I'll subscribe to you.